Nathan Gandhi, GP at Wellspring Surgery in St Anne's, Nottingham, also owner of eGP Learning. And I'm here today to walk you through the F12 system that's used by many practices in the Nottingham area to try and help streamline the way that we do referrals and guidance for our patients and practices. So to talk you through it, first of all, you need a patient open. This is very clear. It won't, will not work unless you've got an open patient. And today we're joined by Bugs Bunny, our test patient. In order to access the system, the first thing you need to do is press F12, so the shortcut key at the top of the keyboard. By doing so, it brings up this little window. Now, as you can see, mine's already populated here with these three little icons. You do need to add these for the first time if you do not have them there on your F12 launcher. In order to do that, just simply type in F12 into the search box, press enter, and as you can see, they come up here, okay? You just need to add in the first three ones, so F12 data templates, Pathfinder, and signposting. And to do so, you just simply right click and add to favorites, and then it'll import them across onto the various letters. Then you close, and then you press F12 again, okay? Once you've done this, it'll work every time afterwards. To launch the F12 um, template, all you then need to do is press whatever letter it is the Pathfinder on. You can double click if you want, but pressing the letter is a lot quicker. So for me, it's A, press A, and here we go. This is F12. So to walk you through what F12 is, it's basically a hub of templates that you can use to try and streamline the way that you're working for our patients. As you can see, various different categories and, and resources and stuff that are available. Um, to go through them simply, so for example, we've got cardiology, click on it, it takes you through to the cardiology template that talks about all the various different services that we have available to help us in terms of managing our patients. And also if there's any relevant stuff that may need to be done before you try and exclude issues. So for example, if you're looking at AF, atrial fibrillation. We've got the APC AF guidance, direct link to it. Also suggesting if you need to do an echo at what point, what kind of blood tests you may need to consider, um, and then leaflets for patients if you need them. Looking through things in more detail, you can then also look at the variety of different um, decision aids. So for example, if we go to colorectal, and we have the new rapid colorectal cancer diagnostic pathway service. So by clicking on this, if you've got a patient that you suspect may have cancer, it takes you through to the, the template and gives you an idea of what you may need to consider. So if you've got a patient without rectal bleeding, but you do have other symptoms, it gives you instructions of what you may need to do. Um, if you have a patient with rectal bleeding, it's just straight to form and refer from there. Okay. Press escape and that takes you back to the original menu. Um, there are lots of other resources available. So we've got prescribing guidance, which links to the APC website. As you can see, all the various different supports there, as well as simple things like a fever pain score calculator for questions about tonsillitis and that kind of stuff, SIP fee guidance, lots of useful things. It has a link to the up-to-date two-week wait forms, probably one of the most useful areas of the system. So at least you know that when you're filling in the forms, it's the most up-to-date kind of version, and therefore should be no problems in terms of it being processed once it's been sent. Also links into various buttons that allow you to task the secretary to um, basically make sure it's all gone through so there's an auditable record of things that you're doing. Um, lots of other useful resources for patients can be on here. So for example, if you look at mental health, um, it can link into the variety of different services. So mental health services are constantly changing. At least you should hopefully have the up-to-date information by looking at these templates. For example, um, IAPT contact details either for you to refer or to self get the patient to self-refer themselves, as well as other support services like STEPS, BME Community, for example. However, if you're looking for more details, memory services, other kind of toolkits and that kind of stuff and information that you may need. Sometimes you may not be able to find what you want and there is a search function. To do so, you just click on the search tab here, as you can see, it brings up a little um, uh, tab box and then you just simply type what you want. So for example, if I was to type in I, click enter and as you can see it opens it up in a, um, a windows browser and it just tells you where the pages will be sometimes it's a little bit slow as you can see it does depend on your data connection and there so if i was looking at eyes it's on the diabetes and what page and then ophthalmology and what page it is just a whistle stops tour of what f12 is and what it can do for you um, do try and have a look at it. it does take a little bit of getting used to um, it can be a little clunky at times and, and difficult to find information that, uh, and hence the search function can be quite useful. Um, however, one of the key reasons for using this is the fact that this is centrally updated. So at least the information on here should be the most up-to-date versions and therefore making sure that when it comes to referrals and that kind of stuff, you're doing the right kind of thing, the most appropriate way and timely, which is obviously key. I hope this has been useful for you. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact us at eGP Learning. 
um, or myself, Dr. Gandalf, on Twitter, Dr. Gandalf 52 All the best, guys. See you later. Bye.